Hi, welcome to Forest High STEM Academy, the Engineering Corner. I'm Miss White, and you'll hear from Mr. Diffie soon. Let's talk about what we are doing today on the Engineering Corner. Well, recently, CDC made recommendations that everybody needs to be wearing a cloth face covering whenever you go into public settings, especially in spots with social distancing. It's hard to measure or difficult to maintain. So we're talking about grocery stores. We're talking about pharmacies. Maybe sometimes even when we go outside to exercise, we need to have a cloth face covering. And so we came up with the idea that we would show you how we made our own personal face masks based off of the materials that we had in our home. Now, well, you'll see different designs from me, Mr. Diffie, and then I have someone else that created a video on how they made their face mask. And maybe you'll get a couple of ideas on how you can make your own personal face mask for when you have to go out in public settings. Um, I hope you enjoy. Bye. Hi, so let's talk about my design for my face covering. Um, I had to actually utilize the design process myself because I had never made a face covering. I didn't know what needed to be included, things that I needed to consider when making my face mask. And I had to see what materials I had in my home where I can make a good face mask so I had to do a little bit of research and that is like the first step of the design process when you're defining your problem you're trying to figure out what's the problem what do I need to make sure needs to happen um, and so I had to do a little bit of research so I went to what other website what I go to it's the CDC website and to help me generate some concepts so I went to the CDC and they actually provide instructions or specifications on what a cloth face covering should do. One, it should fit snugly around the face. Two, it should have ties or loops. Three, it should have multiple layers of fabric. Uh, four, it should allow for breathing without restriction and it should be able to be machine washed. So I looked at that and that's part of my criteria. And then I'm like, well, I'm restricted. So I have some constraints because I don't have a sewing machine. I don't have, I don't even have a stapler if I wanted to cut things apart, make different pieces. So I know I'm a teacher. I don't have staplers in my home. Um, and I only had certain materials. So what did I have? I know I had a bandana. I had two ponytail holders. And I actually had some filters that I cut up and cut apart. So I had those materials in my home. So could I make a decent face mask or a face covering with these materials? I had to do some additional research. And luckily for me, it was on the CDC website where they have ideas on how you can make you can make a face covering using the sewing machine and you or you can make a face covering without a sewing machine and they actually had one where you could actually use a bandana so i chose that concept with in addition to i'm going to add filters inside my bandana so i want you to look at the video thanks bye Hey everybody, hope you had a good week last week. I wanted to show you some of the masks that I've acquired recently and some of the problems that I've had with them and how I've fixed them and how I've been using them. And also I want to show you how to make a, what I call, summer scarf out of an old t-shirt. So let's get right to it. I have a few masks that were made by a friend and um, she had to go through a few versions of it, I think, to get it right. And what she realized was that as she was making these masks, and this person has, has a sewing machine, um, as she was making this, that she needed to make these tie off instead of a elastic, you know, stretchy band because people were having trouble sizing them. So having a tie off was really critical for 
making a mask that would work for me. And this mask has a pouch in it so that you can put a filter in there if you would like. This one I have found to be the most comfortable mask and the easiest to use. And I just slide it on, I let it, I let it rest over my ears rather than pull on your ears because if it's pulling at all, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to irritate your skin and you're not gonna wanna wear it. <laughs> and so this one just works really well. I can throw it off like this, right? I can even just pull these around the bottom and just tighten them there and this works really well, very quickly to put it on and use it. So I just did mask one. That one's worked really well for me so far. Mask number two here. This one was the one I had problems sizing and you can see if you're gonna tie in something elastic that you really wanna, you're gonna, it's, there's gonna be some trial and error involved in, in sizing these properly. So I had some trouble fitting this. So what I did was I, I took something that I had that was elastic and, and uh, tied it off just so that it could fit on my face. And this one's a little tight but it still works for me. And there you have it, so quick, very easy to put on. And made by the same person. And then I got these recently too. These are lighter weight, very comfortable. I found this lightweight elastic band to, to break easily, or at least to snap out of where it was tied in easily. I had to re-sew these by hand a few times. And you can see there and there, I broke this off last night. I expanded this one too by adding a rubber band. So this one actually works really well. This one's probably the most comfortable one and I can put a filter in this one as well. You have to be careful. I'm afraid I'm gonna snap it again. But um, anyhow, I found these filters from a company called Filty and they claim that it will filter 0.3 micron at 95% effectiveness. So I'd like to see the clinicals on that, but it seems like a good material. It's, uh, <coughs> it's uh, soft to the touch, it doesn't irritate the face at all, but this is meant to, I think, go between uh, in a filter slot so that it shouldn't be touching your face. I don't think you want to get a lot of moisture on this. So I got a few of those. And one thing I've been doing also is I've been using a regular surgical mask. Um, inside of the pouches for each one of these. So what I'll do is I'll take a, a mask and I'll put this inside of the mask as it's filtered. Um, these are hard to clean so I would get rid of these. I wouldn't keep those too long. And luckily I have some of these to use as filters until I run out. But um, one thing you want to do with these masks really is you want to wash them every time you use them. So when you're done using it, it's, it goes in the wash. So it's really critical that you have more than one mask if you plan on wearing a mask or if you plan on being outside a lot during the spring and summer of 2020. Okay, let's look at how to make something that will work for you. It doesn't require a sewing machine. It doesn't require any sewing skills. It doesn't require any special resources or material. And we're gonna be able to make one of these masks right here using an old t-shirt only. Okay, let's take a look. 